Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Vera, London-based, nature-inspired abstract artist. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm here in my art studio, Wimbledon Art Studios, making progress on some of my textile-inspired mixed-media weaving artworks. And this week, or the, this, this past couple of weeks, I'm basically trying to find different ways of incorporating more of the nature influence into the weaving themselves. Um, you know that all my artwork, whether it's with um, acrylic on canvas or whether it's on watercolor paper with inks, all my artwork is always inspired by nature, the colors of nature, the texture of nature. And yeah, I'm always looking to, to incorporate elements of nature, not just the influence and the inspiration and the colors and the textures, but actual elements of the natural world into my artwork. So I've been doing quite a lot of experimenting in terms of trying to figure out different ways that I can incorporate leaves and flowers, um, as well as some pieces of bark and stone and so forth into my actual artwork. So you can see here in front of me, I've done um, quite a lot of different experiments to see how some of these might look, you know, with different colors or with different leaf shapes. And essentially these are all kind of stamped, you might be able to see the different leaf shapes. Some of them I, I kind of like better than I, others. Um, that's the nature of experimenting. <laughs> but you can see that there's um, quite a lot of kind of trial and error when you think about different ways of doing things and what you want the artwork to look like. And you can see also maybe behind me here, I have one of my artworks where it's, um, it, it is nature inspired. It's a tulip in a vase. Obviously tulip is a plant, it's a flower, it's nature. But again, I really wanted to incorporate more elements of the natural world into it in a very physical and real way. And one of my loves in terms of nature specifically is gardening. So for that painting, you might be able to see all those circular shapes with different mixed media and different acrylic paint. So for that painting, I effectively used flower pots. Um, I, I use flower pots all the time when I garden, you know, when you're buying different plants and then you kind of plant them in your own garden. And I love the circular shape of them, but it, like I say, I wanted it to be speaking to the natural influence, speaking to the gardening inspiration, speaking to not just a circular shape in an artwork, but that that circular shape comes from flower pots, which are fundamentally a, fun, a, a good part, um, well, I keep on saying fundamentally, they're a fundamental part of gardening. So in terms of these leaves, um, you can see that I've also done a few strips behind me as well. And I think some of these have worked out, uh, at least I'm happy with them. And there's a couple of different things I'm experimenting with and you might be able to see. So this might be a good example that you sort of have the the stamped, if we can call it that, the stamped image of the leaf itself, and then the reverse image where really the color that I apply is on the back and effectively the negative space is um, where you lift out, where you lift out the, the leaf. So when I was doing these early on, I thought both of them kind of had their pluses and minuses in terms of how they looked. And actually, I think there's something to be said about the mirror image and reverse images and working with both of the elements together in one weaving. You can see another example of that here that I did with ivy, the ivy in front of me actually, where again, there's kind of the one image and then the reverse image. And I think the other thing I was looking at quite a lot in terms of experimenting and see what I like and what I don't like is um, the white outlines. And you can see here, I have a couple of strips where I don't have any white outlines. And I think those are quite good, but then when you add the white outlines, I think it just helps focus the eye a bit more. I think in terms of the composition overall of the weavings, I do like to include a bit of white kind of pencil, white pen here and there just to lift the composition, make it a bit more interesting, give it more texture, more detail. But in these leaf shapes in specific, I also thought it was a good way to lift out the leaf shape so that your eye can register a bit more easily that it is meant to be a leaf. It's not, you can see in this one that I'm, I'm still working on it. You know, on this side, I haven't had the, I haven't applied the white kind of outline just yet. And if you really look at it, you can sort of see it's a leaf shape, but it's um, 
you might not be able to pick it out as easily. Whereas I think on this side with the white outline, it's much more clear that it's, it's meant to be a leaf, that they, that's what it is. The other aspect that I wanted to show you is um, other experimentation. So here I have a Ziploc bag that I've kept in the fridge for a couple days <laughs> until I had a chance to use it today. But this is basically all sorts of different leaves that I've um, collected from different places, including actually uh, my mother-in-law's garden, the Isle of Wight. <laughs> And they're just different leaves, different textures to experiment and to see what works well with this technique. Part of it is a visual idea in terms of what leaf shape works well, what leaf texture works well, because each leaf obviously has its own texture that may or may not translate into the actual artwork itself. And I want to test that to see how it looks. But then the other idea for me is specifically which plants I choose to work with. Um, I didn't want it to just be, oh, let's incorporate a bunch of leaves and kind of that's that. I want there to be a reason why I'm using certain plants. So the first two that I started with, the idea is to look at plants which some people love and some people hate. And they can be quite polarizing. Um, plants which if they're sort of controlled and managed in a garden environment, they can be amazing. And yet plants which can also quite dominate quite quickly and spread quite widely and take over other plants. And as a result of that, some people absolutely hate them. So the two examples that I have in terms of starting out with that idea of the different plants is buddlier and ivy. So buddlier, in the UK, it's quite popular. In the US, less so. Frankly, I'd never really heard of buddleia until I moved here. But buddleia is this plant which um, basically butterflies absolutely love. And if you look at it just purely in terms of the flower itself, there's these, uh, how do I even describe them? They're, they're, they're clusters of flowers, almost in like an elongated pyramid shape. And they tend to be purple, um, some of them are kind of darker purple, lighter purple, there's even white ones. And I think they're absolutely beautiful plants. Unfortunately, because they just are so vigorous and so strong and so hardy, they grow absolutely everywhere. So if you travel through the trains, oftentimes you see them along the train tracks, you often see them taking over abandoned building sites, that type of thing. So there's, there, there's that association with them that Again, a controlled environment, when they're managed and pruned, they can be absolutely beautiful, gorgeous plants. Butterflies love them, but when they're left to their own devices, they can also be quite domineering. Ivy, same thing. I, I, do, I adore ivy. I think the leaf shape, there's sort of different varieties, but I think the leaf shape is very beautiful. I love the fact that it's basically just evergreen and unkillable. <laughs> it's great. Um, and I love the, the climbing aspect of it, that it covers walls. I also love the fact that it trails sometimes, depending on what, what ivy you get. And actually, it's one of those plants that apparently they've done lots of studies on that really purifies air quite well. So I have a couple of um, ivy plants in my studio, just over there. But again, it's one of those things where if you don't sort of manage or control it, or it can take over and there's definitely like I said, derelict building sites as well that ivy has completely taken over. So that's why those, to me, those are two examples of plants that polarize people. And that was one of the, one of the aspects of plants that I wanted to, I suppose, look at and to incorporate in my artwork. Some of the other plants I have in here include foxgloves. There's some geraniums, there's some aquilegia, there's some violet leaves. What else do I have? Ah, there's strawberries because actually strawberry leaves are quite pretty and they're quite textural. And there's hydrangeas, one of my all-time favorite flowers. So that's, that's, um, that's where we are. I just wanted to share with you this week a little bit more about my inspiration with nature and, like I say, ways that I'm trying to incorporate nature into my work, not purely from just a kind of inspiration and influence way, but also in a fundamental way to actually incorporate nature into my artwork. So thank you very much. I hope you're enjoying watching these series. I'm sorry for my squeaky chair. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching these weekly video series that I've been doing, Dispatches from the Art Studio. 
If you want to connect with me in real life, you can always come visit me at the Wimbledon Art Studios in Southwest London, or online, I have my website at veravierandthewall.com, or I'm on all sorts of social media networks, and my handle's always Vera, Vera on the Wall. Thank you so much for joining me this week, and I hope you enjoy your day, whatever you're doing, wherever you are. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.